orbiting 320 miles above the Earth is the Hubble Space Telescope. It is named after American astronomer Edwin Hubble. He proved that what was thought to be clouds of gas and dust were actually entire galaxies. The Hubble telescope provides spectacular details of the universe. Before the invention of the telescope, we could only look at the stars and use our imagination. Galileo constructed his telescope in 1609. At the time, only church leaders and a few citizens could get a better view of the cosmos. It would take a new invention to change that. The first crude attempt to present the universe to large groups of people was the Iodoranian in 1780. It was more theatrical than scientific. The first actual projection planetarium opened in 1925 in Germany. It used the classic dome shape and deployed the Zeiss Model 1 projector. The first planetarium in North America would use the new Model 2 and would be built in Chicago. Chicago grew from the Illinois prairies. By 1930, it had become a major center of activity in the United States. It was the perfect spot for the nation's first planetarium. Chicago is known for its blending of architectural styles, and the Adler Planetarium is no exception. The Adler Planetarium was founded in 1930 by Chicago businessman Max Adler. It was constructed one mile from downtown on Northerly Island. The centerpiece was the Zeiss Star Projector. The museum is also home to one of the largest and most significant collections of historic astronomical scientific instruments in the world. From 1930 to the present, the Adler has also been a teaching museum. The displays offer detailed information. Classes as well as seminars are offered. The planetarium offers one of the best views of the Chicago skyline. The building is in the Art Deco style, using brown granite with bronze accents. The dome is made of copper. The interior looks nothing like the 1930s style of museums.
Many displays are now interactive and immerse the visitors in the experience. This atlas is from 1620 and is as much art as science. This star finder is from 1850. The telescope collection goes back 400 years. This is the 18 and a half inch Dearborn Refractor Telescope. In 1860, it was the largest telescope in the United States. The base could be mistaken for a sculpture. Many exhibits demonstrate the movements of our solar system. The armillary sphere is an ancient device that represents the places of celestial objects in the sky. It was invented simultaneously in China and Greece about 400 BC. A larger sphere is used for demonstration. An orrery is a mechanical model of the solar system. The Adler has many on display, from small tabletop items to this large floor standing piece. The Adler has a large array of pocket sundials. They were an early form of pocket watch. These devices include a compass for proper alignment. This one was used in a garden. This had a high degree of accuracy. And this would fire a cannon at noon. The quadrant was used to calculate longitude, latitude, and time of day. It was first used by Ptolemy in 14th century Greece. It was a vital tool for sailors. This one was used by King Louis XIV of France. Since it opened in 1930, the Adler has constantly upgraded the projection system used for the sky shows. While the Zeiss Model 2 star projector was state-of-the-art at the time, a new theater was needed. The museum now has new sky theaters with powerful computer software driving six 4K digital projectors. The 
Adler offers a step back in time and a step forward to the future.